Mission Mission Show. My name is Mary McElhatt and I'm your host today. We are broadcasting live in Las Vegas, Nevada. We broadcast live every Friday at 11 a.m. Thank you for tuning in. And also, thank you for sharing any of these videos uh, with family, friends all over the world. Because here at Permission Mission, we talk about the hard subject of mortality. Every week, we're just practicing to become better at it so we can implement the conversations into our home, into our workplaces, in with our friends, and especially in with the children. Truth or dare is the topic today. All of you out there have at least played this game once, maybe more, and maybe you're still playing it to this day. Truth or dare today is going to be on the topic of the truth is we have a 100% mortality rate. And on the dare is, the dare is that I would challenge you to take the opportunity to dive more into this discussion of planning, preparing, letting our families know that we love them, making sure that we're taken care of at the time that's most needed and that's obviously at the end of our life. So I dare you to just take it on because the benefits that you will lose by not doing it is a big cost very big cost and I don't want that to happen to you I don't want it to happen to my family and I certainly don't want it to happen to those that we leave and love behind so the truth about uh, you know I want to talk about the truth and dare that I played uh, when I was a child I shared one of them on the show already one of the dares was to kiss the boy behind the tree for 20 30 seconds I did that I think I would have rather taken the truth. It probably would have been a little easier. I remember being so nervous. Anyway, but the biggest dare that I have taken by this game was called the Witchy Poo Dare. Witchy Poo in our family was a concoction of whatever was in the refrigerator that my siblings, my older siblings, would put in a bowl and mix up, and it didn't matter what it was. It was pickle juice to horseradish sauce or, or um, horseradish to mayonnaise to ketchup to mustard to all and anything that they could put in a little bowl. So the dare was to taste the witchy poo. And I'm telling you, it was pretty disgusting. <laughs> I uh, caught on fairly quick. I always kept taking the truth because I knew that Witchy Poo was waiting for me at any time. Thanks, Deb and Kevin and Danny and Teresa, whoever was involved with that Witchy Poo. Thanks. You scarred me for life. The um, topic, so again, this show is for us to get the practice, right? The practice of how do we bring such a tough topic up in front of our families? How do we personally accept our own mortality enough to say, you know, I'm going to open up this talk, it, this talk with you because I don't want you being left in the dust. I was 14 years old. It, I didn't see it coming. And I know for a fact that that devastation was a thousand times harder on me at 14 than if somebody would have just sat down with me ahead of time and talked openly about death and dying. So the truth, you may or may not be able to afford dying. That is a truth. A lot of people say, well, dying is expensive. Well, it's not compared to living. We spend way more money living than we do when we pass away. Many people just assume that they'll have things handled at the end. That's basically saying that we've already predicted the future, and that's not possible. We have no idea from one day to the next whether we will be here or not, and finances could be good today. But at the end, what I've noticed is that if a person, a loved one gets sick, we'll do anything in our power to make sure to take care of that loved one and whatever finances come along with that, we tend to spend. So never assume that you will have it at the end. That's why we're talking about it beforehand. The dare, I would, I would totally dare you to 
reach out to me. Permissionmission.com has an inquiry page. It's a contact page out to me personally. And I just dare you to have a, a quick conversation with me, and I will share with you just three simple steps on how to get things started. So go to the website and just check in with me, and we'll talk over the phone or I'll meet with you, whatever is easiest, because I just dare you to see how easy it is. Sometimes the dare is easier than the truth on the truth or dare game, sometimes vice versa. So the truth by not talking about mortality is that millions of dollars, thousands, billions of dollars are left unused and misused. What do I mean by that? Because we don't talk about mortality in the, in ahead of time, a lot of our assets are not going where we want them to. So if we don't talk about it, they're di being distributed in ways that we probably would be unsettling to us if we were still here. So take the time to think about it. I had uh, Raina on the show, Raina, Raina McDonald on the show. She is a estate planning attorney. There are several of them here in town that can help you. Make sure that you take the time to figure those things out ahead of time because I've also seen where it's been misused. Money's been left into the wrong hands of people, of families that have not really dealt with a lot of money and really don't know what to do with it. So we watch those shows, right? The people that win a million uh, jackpots or, or millions of dollars end up bankrupt within a certain amount of time. So we can really take the time to think about these things ahead of time. Um, I dare you to spend your money today. What do I mean by that? I dare you to spend the money that you have on that trip you've been waiting to take. I dare you to start spending money that you have on a legacy that starts today, not after we're dead. I would prefer to see the legacy I'm leaving while I'm still here, knowing that it will also last after me. People don't understand that they can actually create a legacy while they're living. It doesn't have to be after they're gone. If you love animals, if you love education, if you love children, if you love uh, an, a hobby, uh, if you love small new businesses because you started out in your garage, you want to get with somebody who's starting out and maybe invest with them. See your money work for you while you're alive and it may even keep you alive a little longer because you're excited about something brand new. Uh, the landfills. The landfills are already full. What do I mean by that? We are overstuffing our world. We have so many things. With the end in mind, it may help and support us on thinking, do we really need this? Is it really going to make a difference having all this now? Because what I witness and have witnessed in my own life is all the things that are left after aren't, necessar aren't necessarily a burden, not always. However, it can be overwhelming when you're already grieving and you have all these other things that you just don't know what to do with and you don't want to let them go. Some people feel guilty about letting things go that were their parents or their family members because it, it, it was a part of them and they feel if they let it go, maybe it might let the idea of the memory of them to go, but that's not the case. One thing I'm so proud of my husband for doing recently is that he is the art guy, okay, design. Uh, the best way I can describe he and I, the difference between the two, is if you walk into my office, I have just a small pile of of paperwork and books and maybe a picture or two on the wall. If you walk into my husband's office, it is loaded with pictures and design and graphics and hobbies. He loves Star Wars. He loves Batman. He loves anything uh, that, a, that a child, a young boy would love to walk into their office or into their room and be greeted with all kinds of 
action heroes. So I was talking with him, and I said, you know, sweetheart, if you pass before me, I'm really not going to know what to do with all of this. Well, he's like, well, you can sell it. You can, you know, get online, and you can. I'm like, really, honey? Am I really going to be in that frame of mind to take all of the things you love so much, and what if I don't sell them? What if they end up in the garbage? What if they don't go to a place that could keep your legacy alive? You know what I mean? So he has been consciously thinking about the things that he has that he can part with now while he's, and, and reap the benefits of some money for it and put it into the hands of those who would appreciate it as he has. And he will continue because again, that's what a lasting legacy does. It keeps on giving. We hold on to things so much that at the end, it doesn't get to give. It doesn't get a chance to keep on giving. So I'm super proud of you, baby, for uh, taking a look at all your action heroes. And I'm not saying get rid of all of them. I'm just saying maybe tone it down a little bit for us to maybe take some trips or something to have some fun. <laughs> uh, the other is to uh, diseases. Now, today, this day and age, we have so many of them that we're dealing with. We uh, just turn on the social media, open up the newspaper, watch the news. We're always coming across these new diseases that were being dealt. That is the truth, right? We're dealing with these things. Um, all these prognoses, and it's frustrating, and people are stressed to the hilt, and I don't want people to be stressed. I want people to be prepared. I want people to be at peace with talking about hard stuff. Getting a diagnosis is hard stuff. It's been proven, though, that when they talk more through it and they face the inevitable, if that's their diagnosis, they have a lot more peace. They're living a quality life with the time that they have. I've shared that with uh, my dear friend, Troy, who's really fighting the fight. And we're, we're holding on to some good news right now that he is going to be 100% cured of the cancer that he has been dealing with over the last couple years. So I am seeing that. Now, the dare is to get a physical early. Go get a checkup. I myself procrastinate. There are things that we can do ahead of time rather than just waiting because I think it is easy to keep caught up in life and it's easy just to keep with the daily pace of what we're doing and what we've been doing and we ignore the signs. I'm guilty, okay? I'm talking to myself as well. I dare us to go out and really take the time, whether it's get a physical, whether it's have our blood work checked. I've heard things where people get their blood work checked and check their, you know, as far as their levels and things like that for vitamins, deficiencies, and things like that that can be course corrected immediately. It's amazing. Sometimes, though, it's easier to just wait and wait it out. And then, obviously, that sometimes is too late. So I dare you, get to the doctor, make that call today. That is an action step for you. It doesn't get worse by taking some action today. You'll actually feel like a million bucks once you know what's going on if you're having some of those issues. I wanna make sure that if you uh, have any questions or even a truth or dare out there in the audience today, if you'd like to get on the chat and post a question or a truth or dare that you have um, would like to share with me so I can share it on the show, please do at any time. You can always uh, post it on the chat at WWDBTV, on the Facebook, also on the WWTV.com. So the other, your children may not be there to make your arrangements. That is a truth. The truth is, is that there is no order, but there is an order. Many, many times, I hear it all the time, well, my children are gonna take care of that. They'll take care of that. 
as a daughter who had her father's prearranged before their passing, it was the ultimate gift. I felt taken care of. I felt like we had the hardest talk before they passed on. Never assume that your children are going to be there at the end because we don't know. And I dare you to sit with your, chil your children or your child and talk with them. Bring them along with a discussion when you're reaching out to me on permissionmission.com. Bring them along to a funeral home when you're going to start the conversation of pre-planning. They absolutely will feel different on the day that something happens than it being an absent, silent discussion. Children are flexible. Even adult children feel loved. They feel loved when they know that you're taken care of at the time that it's needed, and they're taken care of at the time that it's needed. So the other one, um, the truth is, if we do this, we will change the world. What do I mean by that? If we openly discuss the hardest topic on the planet, which is death and dying, it will change the world. Because the truth is, is that every family that is bold and proudly and openly discussing death and mortality, it changes the family for the better. It makes them closer. It brings something out of us that brings us alive. I have witnessed it. I have seen it time and time again in other families. So this is a truth. If we do not have this talk, nothing changes. If we have the talk, we have that family that we've been wanting to wake up. <laughs> we've been wanting to come see a, a get involved maybe a little bit more. Our children, it's not that they don't love us and they don't come see us, it's that they're just living their life now too without the reminder that any of us at any given time will go. And it's way easier when family's been connected, even if they agree or disagree, they still have a chance for something better than having nothing discussed or prepared ahead of time at all. Is there someone saying anything on the show? Do we have any questions out there, John? No. We, we have one comment about uh, maybe they, your volume was down a little bit, and I cranked that up. OK. I hope that they can hear me now. I'm waiting for a response from them. Awesome. OK. All right. I got you. We love technology, but hey, we still need job security as people. We still need us. That's right. So, Someone has to turn up the volume button. That's right. So truth or dare is, again, a game that's been around for a very, very long time. Some of us don't like games at all. That's me. I don't like games because somebody has to lose. Truth or dare, though, is, is in this case, I think, a really awesome game to play with our families about this particular topic. What is it that we can bring to the table with some truths around mortality and pre-planning and being prepared to uh, the dare of, you know, if there's some health issues going on, let's get our family members in there to get checked out. Let's let one another support one another to be healthier. Let's take the risk to, again, bring a game that can work in so many different ways um, for the truth or dare, right? Truth or dare, we can customize it around many things. You can do truth or dare for new babies. You can do truth or dare for uh, changes in the workplace. You can do truth or dare for uh, this giving permission to normalize the conversation of mortality so that we are better prepared. We find peace in the passing and we also find peace in the preparedness part of it. The thing that I wanna challenge ourselves to do is
to be ridiculous, to be bold, and to be brave, but more importantly, to do the impossible. It's so much easier when we ignore, we think, but boy, the minute that we take on something really tough, you know it as well as I do. If you've taken on something really, really tough in your life and you got through it and after all was said and done, it was a gift. It was a gift that you survived it. It was a gift that you did it. We feel, we feel just more alive and, and like we can do anything. If we can do this, we can do anything. We get to feel more alive than ever, than ever with permission, permission to speak out and speak up and take our families by the hands and walk each other through what it is that's most important and that is our lives and that also is our passing. So our grandchildren, our children, and everyone that does this will feel brave. That's the bottom line. They will feel brave. When my fathers walked me through the process of preparing for their passing, when it was said and done, there was something inside of me that did feel brave. I had a lot of questions before not talking about it, and now I just feel brave. Every day I wake up, I'm like, all right, I feel brave today. I'm going to take on the day, and if I end it today, then I have felt brave and did what I wanted to do without feeling guilty, without feeling ashamed, and without feeling embarrassed. So that's the opportunity for Permission Mission. We're going to take a quick commercial. I'll see you back. I've got a couple other things to share with you. We've got some amazing guests coming up, so stay tuned for Permission Mission. I'm Mary McElhatton, your host, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Hi, I'm Rainy Day, a professionally licensed generational psychic medium with clairvoyant lineage that extends back for generations. And since birth, I have been blessed with the gift of spiritual insight. I'm a respected spiritual educator. I'm an accurate medical medium and a powerful energy healer, an amazing channel to spirit. I hold a master's degree in clinical behavioral psychology, which I seamlessly integrate with my spiritual gifts. I invite you to embark on an enlightening journey with me in this beautiful, unique show, Three Dot Vegas. There's truly nothing like it. Three Dot Vegas is an innovative way to explore one question with three different perspectives providing the answers and an infinite possibility. Join us for live streaming on WWBD TV, Cosmic Channel, and experience a show that is not only informative, but also transformative. When you open your connection to the universe, anything is possible. Healing from the inside out. Book a life-changing session with me, Rainy, for accurate insight, professional guidance, and a compassionate connection. You can find me at www.rainyday.com and at all my social media platforms at Rainy Day Psychic Medium. Tune in and let's discover the infinite possibilities together. Welcome back to the Permission Mission Show. My name is Mary McElhatton. We are talking about truth or dare. And yes, you choose. It's the game that many of us have played in our lifetime. Some of us may still be playing it. I'm going to challenge you to start playing it again today in your homes with the conversation in mind of mortality. Yes, mortality is something most will shy away from. I've only had a little bit more. I've had a lot more practice. I Every week, my intention is to come on the show, think of different ways and ideas of us simply to practice it so that we normalize this conversation in the world so that every child who loses a parent isn't left in silence or every adult who has lost a child is no longer in silence. So every week I talk about um, the five step rule, right? The five second rule. Five second rule is where we just favor inside, value everyone and everything. 
when I came up with that, the reason I came up with that is just every morning, I, I didn't want to think about mortality. And I'm in the industry. I work with the largest funeral home here in Las Vegas. I have been for 10 years, which is the educational piece that I bring to the show is so that we just understand it. If you're not having to pre-plan a family or you're not thinking about pre-planning for yourself, it's kind of like the subject doesn't ever come up. And when it does, most people run and avoid it. I don't want that for anyone any longer because it doesn't help. So I came up with a five second rule just to be able to take five seconds and think about my day. Favor inside, meaning what am I, what's going on in here? Is my heart good? Do I need to take a breath to get on the road, get in traffic and and be uh, watchful, just be patient? I know there's a lot of us on the road, and car accidents are the number one cause of taking lives. Speeding, number one cause of taking lives. So favoring inside is just a moment to be able to just take a second to breathe and value everyone and everything. So just take a moment to, a couple seconds to value everyone and everything, because every situation both good and bad, can bring us some type of value. I'm going to close it up here pretty soon but because, um, yeah, truth or dare is something I'm going to hand it back over to you all now and let you play it because I've already shared what way I have played it and how I will continue to bring it uh, up in my family because I have a couple grandsons that are 13 now. They're right at the perfect age that I'm going to play this game with them so that they can become more comfortable with it and never think that their Mimi is going to go without saying goodbye or without saying all the things I want to say before I do. So a very, very good friend, and this show actually is honor in honor of her and her family. Very good friend of mine. She was actually somebody I helped plan when I first started with the company. She was, uh, they, you know, they were all in good health. It was a couple. They'd been married over 60 years. Good health. They have one son, one daughter, and Nan is my very, very dear friend. I have worked with her. I have gone through some good stuff with her, some really hard, challenging stuff with her. We were actually business coaches together for about seven years, and I'll tell you, she is just the, the delightful of logic. She is a very logical friend, and when I had reached out to start pre-planning for my friends, which was never an easy task, she was one of the first that reached out to me and said, Mary, my parents haven't done it. I sat down with them. They were reluctant. They did not want to, obviously. It's the first reaction for most of us. And thankfully so, they saw the value in it to think about their son and their daughter to make things easier because they also have a very large family, lots of grandkids and even great grandchildren. So little did we know that her father would pass just a couple years after making the plans unexpectedly. And she, my friend Nan, reached out to me a couple years ago to pre-plan herself and also to make sure that her mom and her had a place, a uh, resting place in one of our properties, and that they would know that they'd be together forever. Recently, Mary has passed away, and I tell you, my heart went out. We didn't expect it. Again, it was just her time, and my friend Nan has not stopped thanking me. I told her, though, you only have to thank me once because that's good enough for me. Just keep passing the message on. But she just embraced me at the service here this week, and she said, Mary, thank you. You are an angel. You are doing angel work. You're doing the work of what people won't do, and I, I tell you, I, I commend all the people out there in my industry who do this, who constantly get rejected or constantly get pushback. But when we have days like this week, who my friend hugged me with tears and 
laughter and she said, boy, mom really did take the time to get all this planned out. I said, she really did. She thought about you guys this day. Her service, celebration of life was beautiful. Her great granddaughters got up and sang. The family is talking and together and really honored the life that this woman lived. And I tell you, I even walked out of there definitely being a better grandmother, a better Mimi. This woman was known to never, ever raise her voice. She just never did. Every single grandchild and child and great-grandchild that spoke about her said she never, ever raised her voice and that she also made food that you didn't want to eat because it was too pretty. <laughs> but they ate it anyway. And the interesting thing, so we're out there. Uh, Mom is going to be laid to rest. And, of course, they were so detailed that they had the stone already engraved with both her mom and my friend Nan, who's standing there with me as they lay mom to rest. Now, if you can imagine, the entire family had not known it was this detailed, but the, ki the grandkids and the cousins and the nephews and the nieces, they were all like, why is Nan's name on there? <laughs> and Nan and I, we just giggled and Nan said, because now I know that that's where I'm gonna be because that's what mom wanted. And, you know, the, the look on people's face was priceless because they, it was, it was comforting to them. And it was also different for them. And what a great lesson for all of them to see just how peaceful and how prepared this family is. I spoke with Nan this morning. She said it was absolutely okay to honor her mom because that's what she's going to do from this day forward. It's not going to take the pain away of losing someone we love, but it certainly does bring some peace and just love to know that her life was well-lived and she's going to continue, she said, to carry on the legacy of her mom, never raising her voice. Good luck, Nan. I tell you, that would be a great honor for her, but one that would be a great task because I don't get, I don't bite my tongue enough, but I too will practice just because I want to honor the best uh, life that she lived by what she lived by. So we do have some great guests coming up. I've got Steve Landon, he, London. He was supposed to be here today. However, we had to kind of bump him up. He's going to be the man to talk about Bitcoin, currency, money, all that stuff most of us uh, either like talking about or absolutely do not like talking about it. He is going to be open and talk about it. And then after that, I have a woman whose name is Susie Truby. She's a very big deal down at the family court, uh, DAFS, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. She's been doing it for a long time, a couple decades. And she is going to talk about some, um, something that happened in her family around organ doning. And it is a powerful story. And I do hope that you, you know, mark out your calendars for the next two weeks. For Friday, 11 a.m., we will broadcast live here in Las Vegas on the Permission Mission Show. So that is the show for today. Truth or dare, I dare you to be like Nan's family. I dare you to take the dare and, and go down to uh, reach out to me on permissionmission.com so I can help you with the three steps of opening up the conversation of mortality so you can talk to your family or go into your local funeral home sit down with somebody, a professional, and ask them how it works, what, is, what are the options, what are costs, what are the benefits. That is a great way to really take a good dare. And then, you know, enjoy and reap the true benefits of having this conversation ahead of time, which is prepared, family knows what you want, having your things that you work so hard for to carry on with somebody else if you're going to sell them ahead of time or you wait and you leave everybody else to do it. That's a little tough on the grieving part. Um, there are so many benefits. I could go on and on and on, but I won't do that for the sake of time. 
I appreciate your all's time today and tuning in for the practice of permission mission, which is to normalize the conversation of mortality so that we have peace and the passing and also peace in the preparedness. So see you next week, everyone. Have a great week. I'll talk to you then. Mary McElhatton with Permission Mission.